What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the high grade Immortal Justice Gundam from Gundam Seed Freedom. Sharing a frame with the Rising Freedom Gundam, it was developed for use by the peace monitoring agency Compass by combining data from the Infinite Justice and Murasame. The high grade Immortal Justice consists of an all new set of 11 runners and a modest sticker sheet. From that, you'll be treated to a construction that feels vaguely similar to the previous high grade Cosmic Era and all Gundam project kits before it, except with polycaps completely phased out in favour of the seed action system frame. That being said, the all new parts still kept the build experience fresh and it can get quite intricate at parts due to the use of small pieces. Though the biggest challenge of the build is the nut marks due to the rich and dark colours, with gate placement not being the best in some parts, emphasising the need for extra cleanup work. Overall though, you can expect a roughly familiar yet novel build that is relatively smooth to go through. Nevertheless, I would recommend beginners of the hobby to get a build or two under your belt before tackling this one. It is also structurally identical to the Rising Freedom, so it has the cross-compatible arms, legs, and waist, besides the universally compatible head and backpack. A straight assembly results in an impressive looking iteration of the Immortal Justice Gundam. Looking like a big mashup of Atheron's Zaft produced units, I like how they brought back the more pointy design language, especially around the chest, waist, and legs. The proportions faithfully represent that as well, being accurate to the CG model. The major details are translated faithfully, and seam lines are kept to a minimum. Color separation is also top notch, seeing as details like the trims on the shoulders, the light blue on the hatch, and the head vulcans are separated with plastic pieces, with sticker use being exclusive to the eyes and head sensors that can be omitted if you plan to paint the separate piece yourself. Smaller paint details like the sensors on the chest, the grey and red for some backpack and thruster details, and the black inside the recesses are left to your discretion, while it is a slight letdown to not have a compass logo for the left shoulder. However, my main issues with the looks boil down to two aspects, the minor one being the wing detail as there is supposed to be a lifted segment that has been misshapen and leveled, while the major one being the red plastic itself, as it looks too dull compared to the official line art, looking like it's in the middle of powering down. The high grade Immortal Justice definitely looks sleeker compared to the Infinite Justice, and if color accuracy isn't one of your concerns, it will look satisfactory as it is. Otherwise, bringing up the red and giving a panel lining will give it that extra visual push. Articulation mostly hinges on the seed action system. Like the Freedom, the Justice possesses a hinged ball jointed neck with some great flexibility. The shoulders are joined onto axes and a ball joint, allowing for incredible omnidirectional flexibility, as well as the rolling and rotating shoulders, while the shoulder joints can catch on the armor to lock in place. The shoulder armor is independent, for the arms to raise perpendicularly, there's a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and ball jointed wrists. The abs move with a hinged peg and a ratcheted C-clip, providing decent crunching range alongside the ball joints at the waist, which can also fully rotate. Front and side skirts can move, the latter more so without the stored weapons while the legs can drop down individually for further clearance for the front to back kicks and the full side splits. There's a thigh rotation, double jointed knees, and a ball jointed ankle armor piece that moves along with the double hinged ball jointed feet for wide footing adjustments besides the movable toe. Finally, the canopy can move while the wings can adjust on three hinges, flap, and flare in and out, while the wing thrusters can adjust accordingly. Articulation on the Immortal Justice is great, while slightly inferior compared to the Rising Freedom, the multiple joints of adjustment for a wider movement range is always appreciated, though despite the core structural solidity, I find that the canopy, wrists, crotch fins, and side skirts pop off a little too easily for my liking while the left backpack wing of my copy has loosened up relatively quickly, so fortification might be needed in those parts as you're going to run into them more likely than not. Accessory-wise, the Immortal Justice only has the standard pair of holding hands, which is a little bit of a letdown, although you can simply steal the Rising Freedom's open hand for its use if you want to. As for weapons, those start with the Vizel Nagel beam boomerang stored on the side skirts. After removal, rearranging the blue piece reveals a slit for the custom effect parts to slot into. They sandwich into the hands for use as standard swords otherwise. 
On a similar note, the Calcitra Heavy Beam Cutting Leg units can be activated with custom effect parts if you want to double up the melee. For defense, the Flash Edge 4 Shield Boomerang can be mounted on the arm with a bracket for that purpose. It is adjustable with a ball joint, and the wings can be accessed by pushing in and rotating the bracket for the boomerang function and inserting a custom beam. Displayable separately using an included adapter, it looks less flashy compared to that of the Rising Freedom, with white stickers for the wings for color correction and grey paint needed for the emitter for full accuracy. Finally, the high energy beam rifle identical to that of the Rising Freedom is included, with stickers for the trims and scope except for the ones by the energy pipes. Featuring a movable foregrip, it can be either sandwiched into the hand for mid-range combat or plugged onto the basket for storage. Last but certainly least, the Immortal Justice has a mobile armor mode. The canopy swings forward after separating in half and catching into the collar to sandwich the head. The wings pivot down and flare out, while the thruster units are adjusted accordingly. The beam cannons extend, the toes fold down, and the rifle and shield plug into each other and are mounted onto the body with the adapter from before. Similar to the Rising Freedom Gundam, this is just the Immortal Justice unapologetically laying on his face with a traffic cone on its head, and its visual absurdity is only seconded by the Scramble Gundam. No, the animation line art shows that the shoulder armor collapses, which looks manually better, sadly it cannot be achieved by the model kit. I guess the mobile armor mode was really an afterthought after all. Compared to the Rising Freedom, the Immortal Justice has the more drastic makeover from their predecessors. Having had the design simplified and the lifter system integrated, while carrying over elements like the characteristic head, leg blades, and a staple transformation gimmick like the Aegis and Savior. The kit itself has a visually simple basis, which reflects in the impressive engineering, a distinct feature set, and great articulation to make the most out of it. On the surface, it's a great release, though when you look into the finer details, the handling over time is one of the major weaknesses of this kit. The mobile armor mode also looks ridiculous, and it looks dull due to the use of the wrong red. That goes without saying that the building experience isn't all that pleasant either, particularly because of the nub marks. The high-grade Immortal Justice Gundam is a great release on paper and would generally satisfy those who are just in it for the model kit. However, depending on your aims and individual copy over time, the experience will fall more towards being mixed. And that's all for me. Thank you for watching, drop a like and comment if you did enjoy the video, subscribe for more content like this, and feel free to follow me on social media with the links down below. That said, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out guys, Bye bye